My name is Jessica Ennis and I'm the World Indoor and Outdoor Heptathlon Champion. I first got involved in athletics when I was about nine or ten and um, I came to Don Valley and they had a summer camp every year. Uh, so I came along and tried all the different events out, really enjoyed it. So I decided to come back the following year and take part. I think when I was at the age of about 15, that was kind of the turning point where I thought, you know, this is fun and I enjoy it, but now I want to take it a little bit more seriously. And that was kind of the point that I realised that, you know, potentially athletics could be a career for me. In the past, I've always had school, I've had sixth form and, and university to juggle with, but now I've got the opportunity, you know, to just train full time and really focus on my athletics 100%. I, I train, I make sure I recover properly, I can get ready for competitions properly and not have the worry of essays on the back of my mind. I hate to be stuck in a nine to five job, you know, behind a desk. You know, I get to come here, I'm outside quite a bit. I get to train and keep fit, have a healthy lifestyle, travel around the world. It's just, it's a brilliant job to have. Competing for your country is, you know, one of the biggest honours and to be able to travel around to different countries, meet different people, put on your Great Britain vest is, you know, it's, it's the best feeling in the world. The difference between pentathlon and heptathlon is basically um, we have an indoor season and outdoor season in athletics um, and the pentathlon is part of the indoor season simply because you can't throw javelin indoors um, so they take the javelin out and they take the 200 meters out and you obviously have to be really well conditioned for the event so that you can do all the events and do all the events together um, so yeah, it's a lot of training, it's a lot of physio and massage so that you're making sure that everything's in line, everything's neutral and you can push yourself. Um, but I think the main thing that's really important when you're training for heptathlon is that you have a great coach that's got a great plan, can structure everything for you um, so that you're, you're doing a heavy session one day, a lighter session the next day and everything's kind of balanced well so you can get the best out of your performance. I train normally twice a day, so I'd get, get up in the morning, do a morning session um, from about nine, half past nine, which would roughly last about three hours. Um, then I'd have a bit of a break, go home for lunch, walk my dog, and then come back and do another session, which would be again about three hours. Um, and it, you know, each day is slightly different because obviously I have to cover each of the events in the heptathlon, um, but each week stays the same. So it's really structured and really programmed. Um, and yeah, and then I have physio once a week, um, soft tissue therapy twice a week. So every day is, you know, quite full. Um, and obviously when it gets round to my rest day, I just enjoy switching off and relaxing a little bit. I'm quite lucky because obviously training so hard for the heptathlon, you can get away with, you know, having the odd treat because you burn it off the next day in training. Obviously you do have the days when you don't want to get out of bed and it's raining and you don't want to go and do a horrible like running session on the track but you know you drag yourself out of bed because you know I'm personally motivated by winning medals and making championships and improving on what I've done in the past and that's what gets me to those sessions when I'm not feeling 100%. Um, I think it was two months before um, the Olympics was due to start, I found out I had three stress fractures in my foot. So that was a massive disappointment and a really hard thing to deal with. As a result of my injury, um, me and my coach and the physios made a decision that I was going to change my takeoff foot for the long jump just to take some pressure off my right foot and to stop an injury like that happen again in the future. So yeah, it was quite a frustrating process and it, it was like changing hands, you know, changing from your right hand to your left hand. And it, it was really difficult, but it was something that I had to do and, you know, to, to make sure that I didn't get injured in the same way again. So the year after and the World Championships in Berlin was a massive focus for me and, and I just wanted to get everything right. I wanted to go there and I wanted to win a medal. Um, so to go there and to perform the way I did, I, I led the competition from the first event to the last event and then to stand on the podium and, you know, have that gold medal put around my neck was the best feeling ever. It was, you know, something really special and something that I'll remember for the rest of my life. I was probably born with, you know, quite a competitive streak in me. 
Um, and I think it's a way I've probably been brought up um, and obviously starting sport and athletics from a young age, it kind of installs some you know, really important qualities in you. It makes you disciplined, it makes you a little bit more focused in all parts of your life. It's just a, a massive adrenaline rush being on the track and getting into your blocks and you know, having the crowd there, the atmosphere and knowing that you've trained so hard for it and that that's your time to show what you've really worked for. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the best feeling in the world and when you cross that line after the 800 and you know, everything's gone to plan, it's, it's really hard to describe how amazing it feels.